Okay, welcome to 2.4. In section 2.2, we introduced the concept of limits and how to compute limits uh, graphically and numerically. In 2.3, we talked about the limit laws and how to compute limits algebraically. Now we're ready to discuss the formal or precise definition of limits. Uh, I, broke, I broke this up into two sections. The first, the first part we're going to re review absolute value inequalities and get to the definition of the formal definition of limits. And then in part two we're going to look at a bunch of examples. Now, um, absolute value inequalities is something that is generally supposed to be covered in, in an intermediate al algebra class. Some teachers probably don't cover it. They, they might figure, hey, when, someday when they get to cal calculus they can learn it then. And today's the day. Here we go. Um, start off with this problem. Remember the absolute value? Uh, and one way to think of it is that the absolute value of a number x is its distance to zero. So this is just saying uh, the distance that x is from zero is five units. Well, that means x could be over here or over here. So the solution to this absolute value equation is x equal plus or minus five. In general, if you have the absolute value of, uh, of an expression, then, then what's inside the absolute values, isn't it true, has to either equal 7 or negative 7? And that, that's exactly how you, how you solve this absolute value equation. You break it up into two separate equations, solve each one separately. Let's say add 5, divide by 3. Uh, now when you get to an absolute value inequality, it's the same idea. This is saying that uh, the distance that x is from 0 is within 5 units. Now what that means is x can be anywhere from negative 5 to 5. So the solution to this absolute value inequality would be negative 5 less than x is less than 5. The basic rule is this. Here, here's the key idea for the whole uh, video. When you have the absolute value of something less than a number, that means the same thing as saying what's inside the absolute value bars is between the opposite of the number and the number. We're assuming a is greater than 0, okay? So, uh, if you wanted to go backwards here, what if you were given, this is a double inequality, if you're given a double inequality, how would you express this as an absolute value inequality? If x is within um, 8 units of 0, between negative 8 and 8, then doesn't that just mean the absolute value of x is less than 8? Alright, well, let's do some more problems here. So for this one, When you're solving this absolute value inequality less than 7, remember the rule. What's inside the absolute value bars has to be between negative 7 and 7. So that's how you, how you set it up. You add 5, divide by 3, there's your solution right there. Um, let's do a few more. How about this one? Um, delta is just a positive number. Okay, it's a constant, some positive constant. So we want to solve this absolute value inequality for x. So remember, what's inside the absolute value bars has to be between negative delta and delta. So to solve it for x, you would just add a to all three sides. Let's do uh, another one. Well, let's go backwards here. If you're given a double inequality, how would you write this as an absolute value inequality. Let me back up for just a second. In order to do that, what you want, really want to do is you want to have uh, the same number on both sides, but one of them would be negative, one of them would be positive. But you want, you want to have the same thing on, on both sides of the inequality symbol. One negative, one, one positive. That's, that's so it fits the form. So what you would do in this case to get that, uh, you, to get a negative a on this side and a on this side, you would just uh, subtract c from all three things, right? Then, then it fits the form. You could say if this blob is between negative a and a, then the absolute value of the blob is less than a. There you go. All right, let's do a few more. We're almost ready. Now, why are we doing this? Because we're going to use this to def we're going to use this, this technique of absolute value inequalities to define uh, the formal or precise definition of limit. Let's do a few more. So let's solve this um, absolute value inequality for f of x. We're assuming, and again, epsilon is just a positive constant. You'll see where that fits in in just a minute. So if you have the absolute value of this blob is less than epsilon, that means what's inside the, remember the rule, folks, if you have the absolute value of a blob is less than a number, what's inside the absolute values is between negative of the number and positive of the number. So you could say f of x minus l is between negative epsilon and epsilon. 
solving for f of x, you would add L to all three sides, and then uh, you're done. Let's do one last one. Let's go backwards again. Let's suppose we have this double inequality. You want to write it as an absolute value inequality. Remember the trick? To, in order to do that, you have to have the same number on both sides, one of them being the negative, of course, one of them being positive. So wouldn't it be nice to have a negative one-half on this side and a positive one-half on that side? So what you could do is just subtract C from all three things, and then so it would be written like this. Okay, I think we're ready for the precise definition of limits. Now remember our working definition says if we have a function f of x, the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l means f of x can be made arbitrarily close to l by picking x sufficiently close to a. Now, I don't know why, but we always make it so the function has a hole at x equal a. I, I guess that's just to emphasize that we don't care what happens when x equal a. You could have a hole. It doesn't mean you always have to have a hole, does it? Alright, so what does that mean? f of x has to be made arbitrarily close to l. You mean I have to make it that close to l? Yeah, arbitrarily close. So, so suppose I pick some arbitrarily small um, band or interval around l. Let's call the radius of that interval epsilon. So this would be l plus epsilon. This would be l minus epsilon. No matter how uh, small that, that band is around L, let's, let's expand that out. Think of this as an error band or allowable error band. You have to be able to make all the f of x's in that band by picking x sufficiently close to A. So what does that mean? Well, if you look at where these lines cross the graph, um, there has to be some interval, a symmetric interval around A. So, I mean, to make it symmetric, you may have to come in a little bit on one side, but let, let's suppose the radius of that interval is delta. This would be a plus delta, and this is a minus delta. So that what? Any x value in that interval around a, the f of x will be in that allowable error band around l. That's, that's what it means. So this is what I just said. For any epsilon greater than zero, that means no matter how small uh, uh, this this rate this interval is around L. You have to be able to squeeze all the function values in that error band by doing what? By finding uh, the corresponding interval around A. That this is the delta radius interval. So that what? If x is any value, if x is any value in that interval around A, then the function value f of x will be in this. Error, error band around L. That's what it says. That, that's it. Um, now the rest has to do with absolute value inequalities. Watch. We can take this we, and uh, to write these each as absolute value inequalities we have to get a negative delta on one side, positive delta on the other. Let's do that by subtracting A from all three sides. To write this as an absolute value inequality we're going to subtract L from all three things, right? So each of these can be written as an absolute value inequality. So it's just a, a, a compact form. No matter how close, for any epsilon around L, you can find a delta uh, ar around A so that if X is within A minus delta and A plus delta, that's what this says, then F of X is within L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon, that's what this says. And that's exactly the formal definition of limit right here. Limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l means for any epsilon greater than zero, remember that's, that's the allowable error around l on the y-axis, you can find a corresponding radius uh, in interval around, the x, around x equal a on the x-axis so that what? If x is within delta units of a, that's what that says, then f of x is within epsilon units of l, that's what that says. Now the only difference is you see this greater than zero thing? That's not a big deal. That just emphasizes the point that we don't care what happens when x equals a. You may have a hole. Notice if x equals a, then the absolute value would be zero. So this, this is saying we don't care what happens when x equals a. All right, that's it. Uh, so on, on the next one, we're gonna, what we're going to do is um, look at some examples of this formal definition. See you then. Bye-bye.